So I don't know why everyone wants me to talk more about the metagame, but I've got to do it uh, because this has been the most requested video that you guys have wanted. So we're not wearing pants in this video, so prepare for, I don't know, for some reason, you guys... You're like, oh my god, Robbie, your top five isn't going to be very accurate. The metagame is essentially set in stone. Zoo, true Draco, Zoo, true Draco. I, I've said this enough. I can fucking sit here and continue to regurgitate this. It's not going to make any sense. Now, one of the things I would like to point out is I put ABC... A little bit lower on my expected flow chart than I actually had intended to but I don't know if it's just because when I played against it last Thursday at locals I my opponent opened up maxi games one and two um, and it made the situation a little bit more dire for me or my opponent opened up maxi which made the situation more dire for me it's almost like it's one of those fucking two things um, but ABC as a deck still has the same detrimental flaw that it has. If I answer your Dragon Buster on your turn, you can't split it out. But Robbie, fucking ABC still a good deck. You're a fucking retard. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay, that's like saying that fucking some stupid shit. I don't even know. I don't get it. I... I mismatched ABC a little bit too hard, probably, maybe. But the thing is, you have to rely on Decode Talker now. You have to, yeah, sure, you can, when you split up your ABC Dragon Buster the first time, you can literally make Decode Talker there and a Dragon Buster. You have to play Emerald now, which should have been mandatory in the fucking first place. Uh, actually, at Locals Thursday, um, I opened up So Booty Game 1. Um, he made an Emerald, recycled two Dragon Busters. Like, he was out of Dragon Busters. Like, once Dragon Buster's gone, like, that deck is so fucking easy to deal with. But the moment that, oh, hey, you know, Masterpiece Shotgun down two of them. Ugh, wish this was vodka. I need it. You know, having once once all the masterpieces are gone, like if they resolve an emerald and just tuck fucking Dragon Buster back in the extra deck, you're just gonna be like, oh boy, I should fucking scoop. Like I'm sitting here with like looking at my one back the entire time, like, oh man, that's nice. I'm only got there. It's fucking the power down trap card. You know, you're like, oh, oh man, maybe we'll be able to chain this. And back go the fucking Dragon Busters. And in game two, I got a. I had the uh, Ash Blossom, thankfully, for our good friend Maxi, the one of King. And then game three, ABC's brick. You know, like, true Draco bricks. And, like, that's a horrifying experience <laughs> when you're, you're looking at your hand, you're like, oh man, double Ignis, double Dynamite Majesty Maiden. You're like, he, he, this is why this deck is good. Like, this is, this is the life I chose to live for myself. And,. It all just comes crumbling down. So, yeah, yeah. ABCs are a semi-real deck. I mean, they're very budget. What do you need? Two desires. It's getting the reprint. Three structure decks. Emerald. Emerald's the only real expensive card. And you have to decide what hand traps you want to play. You know, Deco Talker's like hell. I keep winning these at locals. Um, but hey, you know, Deco Talker. You know. Like four bucks. You know, Link Spider, if you're gonna play Scapegoat for some reason, you know, it's it's not that expensive. So a hundred bucks you can probably build that too. Or you can build the best cheese deck in the world, which is this shit. Um so revising my previous statement about ABC, day a little bit up there, you know. And just to clarify, those of you that are like Rob, you're putting too much faith in world trials. A lot of this community doesn't understand that when a new deck comes out that's very cheap, that can do things, 
players are going to pick it up, whether or not that the deck is extremely tier one. There are way more casual players in this game than there are competitive. That's why the number is growing on this channel. The subscriber count is much lower because there's not a niche for as competitive. There are a lot of people out there that don't give two fucking shits what I'm saying. There's a lot of fucking people out there that slightly care what I'm saying. You know, it's one of the issues I often have making you know, more casual decks because I want them to be the best that they can be. You know, we're not going to put fucking Iria the Possessed Water Charmer in a gadget deck because I fucking like the card. Might put in the side deck. But there's that. Number two. Somebody mentioned Blue Eyes. Blue Eyes has been mentioned multiple times, actually, and I'm surprised how much stock put people put in that deck. Blue Eyes has beaters. It's one of the things that Blue Eyes is good with. However, Blue Eyes can't recover from being blown out. Once again, Blue Eyes can't recover from Masterpiece. I hate that Masterpiece is my fucking excuse for every video I make because the card's existence is cancer. Once Masterpiece gets hit to one or zero, then we can have a more fulfilled metagame. Now, literally, your best matchup is Masterpiece against itself. Zoo is just icing on the fucking cake at this point in time. It's like the little sprinkles you're getting on your fucking Masterpiece cake. It's like, oh my god, ugh. <laughs> Masterpiece, I fucking love you. Like, that's, that's what we're fucking dealing with at the moment. And it sucks for the competitive metagame, because I know there's a lot of innovators out there that want to grow and want to adapt. I mean, kudos to you guys, but like, if your deck can't be Masterpiece, then you're in a very shitty position, and it, it really sucks to say that. So back to Blue Eyes. Sure, Spirit Dragon can tag out, but what does the deck do besides beaters? Sure, Dark Matter Dragon is really good. The Amorphage Lock is really good, but your number one matchup that you need to be worried about, Tribute Summons, and outs your big monsters for little to no cost. Now, if you go to a regional, and you're playing against Rogue all day, you might have a good time. You know, Blue Eyes has an okay matchup against two dino uh, dinosaurs. I mean, it's okay. It's not spectacular. I think true dino definitely wins that matchup 70-30. Almost always should. But I mean, it's not total shit. You have a 30% chance. It's not bad. The other issue is people in the TCG were a lot more aggressive in learning how to play against things. This is something else I made, or I noted in another video. You know, if I, if it's game one, and I know what you're already playing, I'm going to not search because of this card. You know, it all depends on the situation, because I, if I'm under the assumption that you're playing a draw on Lockbird Trick Stars, I'm going to make an attempt not to search. Now, if I don't know what you're playing against, I'm going to proceed along with my day, but for games two and three, I already know what you're doing. I'm going to side appropriately. I'm going to play appropriately. You know, I'm going to set my spell card. I'm going to attribute my true Draco to make sure that, you know, your thing won't be a threat to me. You know, but in the case where you have two reincarnations, I, I salute you. You're the real fucking MVP. But I think people in the TCG at this point in time Ver the competitive scene versus Rogue, it's a lot worse for a Rogue player now because a lot of the better players, they know what they're doing. And it really sucks because back in the day when like Kara Curry fucking M MP or whatever it was, it was a real deck and it started showing up. A lot of people didn't know how to handle it. And that that's where I like to credit innovation for this game. And that's the thing that Blue Eyes lacks. You know, Blue Eyes, it's essentially a one-trick pony. Your secondary trick is you make the Amorphage Lock, but if I assume you're playing the Amorphage Lock, it's so easy to out, you're probably going to brick. And it's unfortunately the same thing with ABC. You know, if I'm playing against ABC, I just play the game on your turn, and it's so sad that that's what Yu-Gi-Oh's adapted to in today's current point in time. But that's just, that's where Blue Eyes and ABC literally stand. I mean, they can compete, but like, on the level that you need to compete, you you have to play bad cards in today's metagame. You know, you have to play Kaijus to out Masterpiece, if, depending on the mode he's on. And 
when when your main deck is already maining your side deck cards, the cards you should be siding, it's it's a clear indicator of an unhealthy metagame. Um, no, we've seen this in tier zero formats where people are maining their side deck, and it sucks asshole if you're playing against Rogue at an event, and you, you draw one of those cards that was specifically designated for that matchup, but you know you're trying to make the best of all of your worlds, and that's honestly what it comes down to. So, because of Masterpiece's pure existence, Blue Eyes, ABC, I mean, they might stand a chance once they're checked, but who knows? It's all within the stars at the moment. You, you know, Alistair and Wind Witch, those are still two very fucking good engines, and those are engines that can really make or break things. Now, someone also mentioned, hey, Robbie. We're going to part. Oh, so the guy that mentioned, Robbie, why did you not mention Pendulum Magicians? I didn't talk about Pendulum Magicians because I'm un, or I'm currently unknown on their standpoint in the metagame. And I like Pendulum Magicians. One of my friends that quit during Pendulum format has recently come back to the game, and he's been playing Pendulum Magicians. But I haven't had time to sit down and fucking figure out everything. I know the one chick searches when she dies, uh, the one Venom, when it's destroyed, destroys something face up. Like, I know these cards are good. I know Oaf Dragon is a very good card. Uh, Pendulum Graph, having a trap card that can blink stuff on your opponent's turn is really fucking good. But you still suffer from the same issues that I think you do. You're a combo deck. And you set up Pendulum Graph, the, the trap card with your scales, you Pendulum Summon and you go. You need raw ways to make advantage, being able to pendulum summon from your hand and recover. There's a lot of decks that can break scales very easily. Case in point, Masterpiece. God. Why is that my excuse for everything? Fucking Dryden't also answers scales. But we can clean up scales a lot easier. But Robbie, the, the, the pendulum magician that destroys shit, <laughs> I have my venom in your scale. Like, hey, you're not gonna Dryden't that. Yeah, you're right. We were never targeting <laughs> that. We were always going for the other scale. I don't particularly care about the guy in the special summons from the graveyard. I mean, to me, it's whatever. That card's... What is that? Black Fang? Special summons from the graveyard. No one plays the bitch that's the water dragon. And the Venom guy and the guy that searches for your pendulum graph. They're the two best cards you got next to Wisdom Eye and whatnot. I mean, we still have three pendulum calls, but you were never playing three pendulum calls. If you're playing three pendulum calls... And you told me you're winning every event. I want to know how many people at your locals have Ash Blossom. Because as soon as... I don't care how good you are at this game. Every time you're going first and your Pendulum Call gets Ash Blossomed, you have three cards. That's a scale. That's a scale. What the fuck are you Pendulum Summoning? Like, what? Your deck loses to Ash Blossom. It fucking loses. That's the issue I have. You know, so many of the rogue players want to put such faith in Pendulum Call, but it's not the way to go. It's so detrimental when you... Uh, Ash Blossom just checks the deck so much. But for the... That's that's my rogue deck of choice. I really like that deck. Uh, I like that deck more than Cheese Trick Stars. That deck is so much better than this, in my opinion. I would rather play that. Um, because the combos, the intricacy, the extra deck potential, um, I like it. I like it a lot. And I also like the Supreme King support. We were always trying to make Zark because we're cheesy as fuck. That, that's besides the point. Uh, that's how I feel about that deck, though. I like it. It's got a lot of cool, unique plays going for it. And it's kind of sad when you think about it that that deck's potential is only really shown after the pendulum mechanic gets nerfed. That's just something funny. So, that, that, that's a little bit more of an explanation on my metagame. I hope that clarifies a few points for you guys. Guys, right, so leave a point down below. Feel free to tell me how much of a fat fucking idiot I am and how my opinion doesn't matter and that I'm a worthless piece of society and I'm probably going to ever never amount to anything other than sitting in my fucking mom's basement. I don't even live in the fucking basement. You do shit right, internet. About how much of a worthless fucking blood-sucking vampire I am on society, and I'm the worst Yu-Gi-Oh player ever. 
doesn't stop my analytics skills. Alright guys, deuces. Hopefully someone will take this video to heart. Sorry Blue Eyes players. Sorry ABC players. I love ABCs to death, but... <sighs> Probably gonna have a dick around pendulum munitions. I don't know. I wanna have fun with Yu-Gi-Oh! Said no one ever. But I kinda do. <laughs> Fucking I hate conflictions. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.